if you do go next cash, how does this fight end? Tell me. Me, I see myself winning. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, that's all I can say. I'm willing to go down to the well and take the win out. Doesn't matter how I'm going to do it. I'm going to definitely call the winner. Yes, we are back at it. Welcome to Real Life Boxing. This week's guest, it's the untouchable Cash Farouk. Cash, welcome to the Real Life. Good to meet you, Mark. You all right? How's life, mate? Yeah, it's good. Uh, just uh, relax, you know what I mean? The summer's over, so old weather's coming in, so I'm not going to be looking forward to that and train while I'm training. How's the family doing? Yeah, they're all doing well. They're keeping healthy, and that's the main thing, you know, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's just run it back to the very beginning, Cash. Where were you born and where you grew up? I was born originally from Pakistan, Gujarat, and uh, that's... Well, we saw most of my family are in that, and uh, we came over to England first in London. I think I was the age of five or four. Then we came over to uh, Glasgow, Scotland, and uh, we've been here since, you know, I mean, that was in 2002, and this has been my home last, what, 19 years. How did you find Glasgow at the start? What was your first impressions of Glasgow? Obviously, the weather. <laughs> I think that's probably the first <laughs> I can remember is the weather. I think we came around, uh, I think we say around April, was it April time? It was the beginning of April. It was, it was freezing. I, can, I have weak, weak memories of it. And, uh, it, was, uh, it was quite windy and cold. and uh, That was it, to be honest. You come from a very close family. I mean, yeah. Would it be fair to say they've laid, made a lot of sacrifices for you during your life? Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, my mum does a lot for me. And, you know, I mean, so my father and my brother and that, everything. You know, and uh, this is the reason I'm here, because of my family, you know. You're one of three brothers, that correct? Yeah, yeah that's mm-hmm. right. How close are you, mate? Yeah, we're all close. We're all close brothers, you know what I mean? And... We're all very supportive, especially my wee brother, you know I mean? I'm quite tight, uh, very mm-hmm. tight with him. You strike me as a very loyal guy, Cash. Would yeah. that be fair to say that came for your upbringing from your family? Yeah, upbringing as well, and you know, and just, just through the way I am as a person. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, just my, well, I've been through my boxing as well, loyalty, everything, you know, and uh, obviously, but, you know, I've just that's the way I've been brought up. Tell me a wee bit more about your upbringing, Cash. Did you have much when you were younger? Or did you have to work for it when you were younger as well? No, I'm just a normal upbringing, you know, I mean, we went to high school, we went to primary school here as well, and it's just normal, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. we, done, we were doing all right, you know, and uh, obviously boxing came to my life at the age of 14, I think mm-hmm. I was 15, and, uh, mm-hmm. and obviously things things changed a lot in my life. Mm-hmm. How did you go me, your mum and dad? You're really close to them as well, yeah? Yeah, I'm close to my mum and dad, and uh, mm-hmm. obviously I'm seeing them every day, so mm-hmm. yeah, I'm very close to my mum and dad, and obviously mom helps me a lot with my boxing, she's, <laughs> uh, she's probably the reason I'm at this stage, you know, I mean, she does a lot for my cooking, and I always ah. tell her what to do when I'm... Uh-huh. Been in, and she does all my washing, so it's you know, uh, I would say she's probably my number one sport in boxing. You touched on there that you started boxing at 14. Yeah, um, did your mom and dad approve it when you're such a young age? You know, my father was wasn't the biggest of thing, you know, I mean, he was he didn't think I was gonna go anywhere mm-hmm. at the beginning mm-hmm. when I had no fights, and I'm just I was like, oh, mom, I want to pursue a career. My trainers tell me I can mm-hmm. go places, mm-hmm. you know, he's like, I'm good enough, and that. And my mom, no, he was like, I think about what you want to do, you know, I mean, else something else, you know, but. I kept at it, you know. I mean, I used to always tell him, I'm gonna, I'm gonna become a boxer, I'm gonna become a boxer. And mom's like, I keep doing what you're doing, and mm-hmm. you know, and that was, I just kept sticking at it and keep going every night. And I never missed a night. And uh, to be honest, still this day, I don't miss a night in boxing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, even when I was a boy, you know, I mean, Christmas, whatever, Halloween, one fine night, I was always in the gym, my mm-hmm. birthdays, and I was trained through Christmas, you know, don't matter really what weather it was, I'm just trained, trained, trained. What brought you to boxing, Cash? Because I wasn't interested at the beginning. Nothing, it was nothing. It was, I'd never even watched boxing. And uh, my friend told me to come down one night. It was a community center here. Uh, you, they used to put a ring together and a, f- a few bags. And um, I went in one night and I was here. We done a circus, skipped. Then we started punching the bag. And that was it. We were about to leave the gym, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it was diff- It was hard. I'm not going to say it was easy. And I was about to leave the boxing gym and... Uh, the trainer came up to me, he was running the club, he's like, oh, come back, you bring your gums next time, and you've got a punch on you, and that was it, I came back the next night, and I went home, and I was like, oh, brilliant, he told me I've got a punch, this and that, so, and, and my, that, that's where everything kicked off, I started coming back every night, and I missed a night, and, mm-hmm. and obviously started having fights, then I went to a different club, obviously with the same guy, he, was, uh, he told me to go over to his other trainer, and uh, that was the end, about 38, 39 fights with the other trainer, and that was, mm-hmm. my career just kicked on, you know what I mean? Would it be fair to say that boxing came natural to you? Well, I wouldn't say I was, at the beginning I used to just come out, pull my head down, just swing, punches. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, wasn't I wasn't I wouldn't say I was talented right at the beginning, but I worked hard. I was always at the gym practicing everything my trainers showed me, and um, you know I would uh, listen to the, everything the advice they gave me. Say, home, don't do anything. Just study what you're doing, boxing. I would, I would listen to them everything you know because I wanted to be a fighter because the things they were telling me, mm-hmm. the places you can go, you can go away trips and holiday, no holiday, but you can get trips abroad. You know, and I used to be like, can you do this and that if you went to Scottish and just things like that. So I was like, I was, re- I was really interested. And uh, I fell in love with it straight away, you know what I mean? Once it started to tell me about things your life boxing can do for you. I read somewhere, mate, that you used to take two buses to training when you were younger. To me, that seems you're a very dedicated man. Do you feel that shaped you into the fighter that you have today, having to do that, that sacrifice at such a young age? Yeah, to be honest, see where it was, the the gym I first joined, there was a community centre up in White Inch near my house. Mm-hmm. I was there for a year and that was shut down with some pro- personal problems my trainer and other people there. And he told me to go over to his trainer. And that was up in Shells and near Celtic Park. Right. So five minutes, ten minutes down from there and mm-hmm. I didn't have a clue to even get there. So I went on Google and searched to <laughs> get, uh, get, uh, get there and uh, and I used to take the same bus. It was the uh, bus I was running from my door. So I used to take two buses, take a bus into town, take the bus from there. I'd done that for maybe five or four years. Uh-huh. And I just kept every night. I never missed a night once, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I've done it from Monday to Tuesday. And I would get home maybe. I'll leave. I'll finish school. I'll get, I'll get there about maybe about... It'll take me an hour and a bit to get to the gym. Then I'll get home maybe about 8.45. And I kept doing that from Monday to Thursday, you know what I mean? And I just mm-hmm. kept it up. You know, I never never got disheartened, you mm-hmm. know. Because I want, wanted to do it. Yeah. You know, no one forced me to do this and that. No one ever said, oh, come back next night, you know. And, but I just wanted to be a fire, so these are the things I had to do. When did you realise that, do you know what, I'm good at this, I'm okay, I can do well at this? No, my trainer, you obviously, my trainer would say, oh, you're, you know, you've got talent, you go all the way. You know, he would tell you things just to give you a bit of encouragement, you know. And uh, But I was like, ah, I just, I'll just keep working towards, I keep working. Whatever, th- whatever happens, I'll be... Happy where I end up, but I kept on winning a few things. I went a few Scottish, few Western districts. I got a few trips abroad, but you know I was uh, I kept winning. As long as I kept winning, I was happy. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. things things kept moving. Who's your idols, Cash? Whether that can be in boxing or in your family, who do you look, look up to? See, in boxing terms, I would say probably the, the guy who brought me into boxing was Bobby McDermott. Mm-hmm. He was probably the guy I looked up to. I was like amateur coach. Isn't it? I my uh, first amateur. He was the guy that inspired me to be a fighter because. Because he had a scrapbook of himself, you know what I mean, when he boxed. Mm-hmm. And he showed me how, where he's been, what he's done in his life, and uh, how he's uh, recovered. He's, he went through a bit of recovery stage in his life as well, with, I think, about drink and drugs and that, and he's yeah. uh, changed his life around. So I took a lot of inspiration from him, you know what I mean, and uh, he was probably say, a guy I looked up to, even the boxing. What did you learn from Bobby, not only in uh, boxing, but as a person? Just things, you know what I mean, how, you know, you got to stick at it. You can't get it on. Mm-hmm. If you want to do something, you got to go and earn it. You gotta wake up, train hard, and mm-hmm. just keep on the work, and don't, don't, you know, what I mean, get distracted outside life. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, what I mean, and uh, just keep, keep, keep moving. What would happen? Even with losses, don't, don't just take it to the heart and just say, "Oh, I'm going, I'm not, gonna, it's not for me." Just keep, uh, keep moving forward. You know, what I mean, with losses, he's like, "God, this is see, as amateur, this is just your apprenticeship." Yeah, you can have twenty losses, you can brush them off and get out and win the Scottish. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. that's your career thing. But this is an apprenticeship. Keep. Keep moving, you know what I mean? Keep picking up experience. See, when you see guys like Ricky Burns and Josh Taylor and what they've achieved in the sport is absolutely colossal for Scottish boxing. Does that encourage you to say, do you know what, I can get there as well one day, what they've achieved also? Yeah, 100%, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's phenomenal, you know what I mean, what they've achieved. Ricky Burns is a three-time world champion and uh, Josh Taylor's undisputed. I think he's probably the first one with the four belts to win it. Mm-hmm. Even Ricky Burns, three-time world champion, he's probably the first guy to do it in Scotland. Yeah. I think there was, I don't know whether there's been two, even someone like two weights to win both titles. He's been two-time world champion, Scott Harrison and Paul mm-hmm. Weir, but Ricky Burns has three different weight classes. It's yeah. hard enough to win one world title. Uh, and Alex uh, Arthur as well in there. When I uh, Alex well. Arthur, he's one thing. And no, but I'm like that. Let's see how far I can go and I just keep working, keep working. Mm-hmm. Wherever your, wherever your uh, thing is, your level's at, that's where you belong, you know what I mean? And that's it, you know, so I'm going to keep working, working towards it. What do you do outside the boxing, Cash? What takes your mind off of things? See, when I've got a fight, I don't really do too much or... Uh, after a fight, I switch off a wee bit, I catch up with my friends. But, but see, when I've uh, when I've got fights, or even if I've got a few things uh, lined up, or whatever, I'm just and I'm in the gym. To be honest, even after a fight, I take time. I don't really take but a couple of days off, and I'm back in the gym, mm-hmm. or I'm out running. 
you know, I don't I don't like like taking two weeks, three weeks. So I know people say switch off and that, but I don't get to a stage where I'm training hard every day. I'm just taking over. Mm-hmm. So when I get back into uh, training, it's not difficult for me. So mm-hmm. I'm always training. You know I mean, and mm-hmm. things when I, things that make my mind switch off. You know I mean, seeing friends, going out, my family, and that's it. You know, eating and, cheesecake. Uh, yeah, eating, to be <laughs> honest, I I enjoy eating food. You know, I mean, that's uh-huh. uh, mm-hmm. you know, see when you're training, you're you're in the house and uh, it gets it gets really difficult sometimes you know what I mean especially your days off you mm-hmm. know and uh, yeah. so you need to watch everything you're doing see when it's all said and done mate what does Cash Farouk have in mind after he leaves the sport what does he want to do I want to achieve the best I can boxing terms you know what I mean obviously I've got my see the goal I've got I keep it to myself I've never told my trainer my manager <laughs> I keep that to myself and I've not really told anybody but before I leave boxing outside my boxing once I'm done boxing I want to get achieve much that I can and day case and I've no regrets once I'm done because mm-hmm. I know like, you see a lot of ex-fires they always have regrets I wish I could have done this I wish yeah. I could have done that so once I'm done I don't want to even say it of any I wish I could have done this but once I'm done boxing I want to skew myself outside of boxing that's probably my first goal you know what I mean yeah and if I could do that I'll be I'll be very very happy obviously we've been through a massive pandemic at the moment how have you coped through COVID how have you remained focused in such a difficult time I've just to be honest I've just, the first when the first lockdown happened I've just run every day Mm-hmm. I was running five days a week, maybe taking Sunday, Sunday off. When the first lockdown happened, uh-huh. and uh, to be honest, I done it for a few weeks. They started getting bored, bored of it. But I kept it up. You know, I mean, I kept doing it after I cut, cut on the three days, maybe two, and I just kept on up. I just kept my mind busy. You know, I mean, doing mm-hmm. something. And obviously, after a while, the gym started. The gym's professional could go back in the gym, so I just kept up training through the pandemic and. Uh, that was it, you know, because you couldn't do too much. You couldn't. Uh, you things, couldn't yeah. do too and, and mm-hmm. nothing to be honest. And uh, and that was it, you know. And uh, just kept myself busy in training. <laughs> I'm obviously without punching. <laughs> do you feel we've lost a generation of fighters during COVID, Cash? Probably the young ones, I and uh, some of the professionals that you know, I mean, the end of their career or maybe or at the beginning of their careers that quite older ones. Mm-hmm. They were probably they probably called our day because they don't know. See last year, see if you said to people that might be two years into your box again mm-hmm. or a year and a half, they might have just said, I might uh, probably call it a day now. That's what I was just going to get it. Do you feel that fighters have been robbed of their peak years of their career? Like, I'm looking at guys like Josh Warrington, a sort of like that. He's maybe yeah, he's robbed a wee bit of, at the peak he's career, a week and a fraction of time. But any fighters like that, do you think they've been robbed? <sighs> to be honest, pro- possibly, yeah, because a year and a half of your career is a long, long time. It's enough for time, and if you think about it. Mm-hmm. A lot of fights that didn't box. See, a lot of fights had fight 2019, mm-hmm. and they were meant to box in say uh, in April time or, mm-hmm. and uh, they couldn't get a fight because the pandemic hit. So that's near enough two years people were out, mm-hmm. and some of the fights have still no box since 2019. Aye. So you can imagine how long that's that's near enough for a time. You talk yep. about two years out of boxing, not because mm-hmm. of they want to call it because of pan- the pandemic. You know, I mean the coronavirus mm-hmm. is still about, and uh, that's it's no. It's no great, I mean, for especially as a boxer, so two years is a long, long time, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and uh, you could have done a lot of things within two years, you know. <laughs> Tell me a wee bit about your amateur career, because it's quite short, wasn't it? I think I had about 49 amateur fights, and uh, I won about 38, and mm-hmm. uh, lost 11, mm-hmm. and I think I only boxed to 2010 to 2015, and uh, what do you call it, I think, I didn't, I didn't have a, I didn't have a great start at the beginning, I think I won f- first three fights, and I lost three fights, my first trainer, then after that, I won... After I won a good few fights with my other trainer, and I represented Scotland about 10 times, and I won the Western Districts four times as well, as a junior, as a youth, and a one time as a senior, scores three times as a junior and a youth. Mm-hmm. And I won the British as a youth once, and represented Scotland a few trips abroad. Yeah. So it was, it was all right, it wasn't near the best, but it was okay, you know, compared yeah. to some of the boys that, that turn over 20 fights or 19 fights, which is, you know, sometimes a professional works out, sometimes it doesn't, but I got de- a near enough decent amateur pedigree you know I mean mm-hmm. who's the best you face in the amateurs I'm just probably f- it's been a few boys abroad but I would say Pierre McGrill he was, he's the one that went to Olympics mm-hmm. he's from I think uh, he's from he's the GB team he wanted to win everything that year mm-hmm. I think he went to Europeans he won the uh, Olympic youth as well so he's probably the best I've probably faced as a an amateur I would probably say were you content with your achievements just as you touched on there as an amateur I would, I would have stayed longer if I, if I never Someone encouraged me to turn over, so that was the reason I turned over. I would have stayed longer, to be honest, maybe 21, 22, but mm-hmm. I would say that was quite young when I turned over. I was only 19. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted, it was just one of the things, I just turned over just for the sake of it. I wanted to give it a shot. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I was going to go and achieve some, the things I'm at the stage I'm at. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
Yeah, so it's just one of the things I just just turned professional at Seiko. Yeah, you know, I never had a clue about ticket sales <laughs> and this. You need bring. I didn't have a clue to be honest. Aye. But as uh, I had a good manager, so he, you know, me looked right after me, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I mean, so that's this is the reason I'm here. You know, I'm a big fan of your style, mate. You remind me of like a Jake Lamotta, yeah. or uh, the way you fight and inside you're like a James Tony. Unbelievable stuff, mate. But do you feel that the style you had, Cash, was tailor made for the pro game? I would say so, yeah. Then you just need to pick up, you just need to pick up these small things, experience like holding on, doing small professional tricks. You know, I mean, obviously, the, Craig was always telling me at the beginning, my trainer at the moment, Craig Rickson, he was telling mm-hmm. me at the beginning when I was turning over, he like, you need you need to go through a profession. You can't just do things as amateur. And he, he developed it, you know what I mean? But you go through in a fight, you experience it through sparring and that. So you pick up through experience. So mm-hmm. I've just, through experience, I've picked up all these things. Obviously, your trainer shows you but it's through experience you go into fights and you pick them up. You just touched on Craig Dixon there. He's been guiding you through your whole yeah. career mostly. What have you learned for Craig? A lot, you know, as you see, he was an ex-professional himself and uh, I think he he retired a good few years well before me. I started and, uh, you know, it's me and him work together. It's a good team. We've got me and him and uh, it's a good bond, you know I mean? Mm-hmm. I listen to him and uh, he works perfectly. Me, his style's tail me to mine. So that's yeah. what, that's what we've, We've achieved both of us have achieved a lot, you know. So would it be fair to say that Craig goes above and beyond for you, mate? He does, you know what I mean. And uh, I've been, I was probably, I wouldn't say his first fight. He had a fight before me, but I was probably six, a second fight. I came to him and uh, and yeah, he does things, you know what I mean. That obviously he does with a stranger, Matt. He does go beyond, you know what I mean. And uh, uh-huh. you know, this is the reason I'm here. Obviously, he's put the time and effort in the last six years. I've been with him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've been. I came to major nineteen. I've been. With, I'm twenty five now, so I've been here for the last six years. So it's mm-hmm. a long, long time, you know. And I would probably think I'll probably retire with him, you know. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather always lives by the persona, mate. Hard work, dedication, prayers and belief in a good team. But people always forget the last bit of the Mayweather persona: prayers and belief in a good team. How vital and crucial is it, Cash, to have a good team around about you in boxing? Hundred percent, you know. And uh, you need a good trainer and a good manager. These are two things. And see if you've got that, you can. You can go anywhere. You know what I mean? You can go achieve. Obviously, your ability, you need your ability to take to the next level as well. But mm-hmm. if you've got the right manager and right trainer, and the manager matches the right fights, mm-hmm. and obviously your trainer uh, who knows this thing, you know what I mean, tells you the right things, you know what I mean, to your own style or whatever, mm-hmm. you can you can need enough to do things when you, you want to mm-hmm. do in this game. I know you're a fighter, Cash. You love your span. You're always up and down the country, Manchester, Aberdeen. Yeah. Do you believe a lot of sparring is a great education for a fighter, especially in this day and age? It is, you know, it's the closest thing to a fight. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not a fight, but it's the closest thing to it. You need to go out and get sparring sound and go out your comfort zone and spar boys that, you know I mean, probably better than you, you know, pick experience up and you might learn a few things from sparring. And, uh, that's, uh, I, like, I like going to other gyms and sparring, mm-hmm. you know, because you're, you're going to their back, not backyard, but you're going to their things and picking things up and... Uh, yeah, I would say sparring is probably the coolest thing. But obviously, you practice these things with your training on the pads, bag work and that. You practice it, shadow boxing. Mm-hmm. Then you do doing sparring. Then mm-hmm. you take that into fighting. So yeah. it's small steps at a time. I need to ask you this question. Tell me the story, right? Or well, your neighbours never knew you were a boxer. Yeah, no one, to be honest, I, my neighbours never knew I was a boxer. <laughs> I mean, then I had to tell them. I think they asked me one time, however. Then obviously, I told them, you know, this and uh-huh. that. And uh I was showing the belt, the separation, and they were over the moon, you know what I mean? It was a Kyle, Kyle Williams fight, wasn't it? I'm sure. I think, I think it was uh, Kyle Williams with Dwayne Winters. One of them, one of them fights, and I told me I'm a fighter, <laughs> this is what I do, and <laughs> now I tell them I'm on that channel, mm-hmm. so keep uh, around me, you know. You turned pro in 2015, Cash. What were your goals of turning pro? Was it British, European, world? To be honest, uh, I'd, pff, it was none of them. I didn't even have the Scottish in my mind. Yes, I've just, I never knew had that in my mind. I just say, just win. That's it. Just keep winning. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it, didn't, it wasn't going too well. I teamed up with Craig. Uh, Craig's been doing my corner since my first fight. But I teamed up with after my my second, no, sorry, my third professional fight. I started team. Uh, I really started training with him full time. Then obviously, my fourth fight, Squall fight came in. That changed my whole career, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My career really kicked off because I was on STV at that time. Right. And, uh, that, that was it was a brilliant buzz for me. You know, I mean, I trained so hard for it. Obviously, it was mouth and off. Yeah, he was a bit mouth and <laughs> off. But you know what? It was good. And it was good what he done. Because mm-hmm. uh, I was like, I can't get beat now. Aye. People want me to beat him. And uh, and I, I trained so hard for that. I remember, it was a cold It was a cold winter that year. It was in 16. It was freezing. I was out every morning running in the morning. And uh, 
and I was I was like Ani, when this fight, this is if I don't to be honest, where do I go from here? So I, was, I trained so hard for it, sparring and everything. Mm-hmm. And I that that would say that changed my whole career. And mm-hmm. I looked boxing, I looked boxing a different. You know I mean, and get somewhere. Before the Scott Allen fight, Cash you contemplated leaving the sport. Was that down to lack of opportunity, or what was the reason behind that? Because I didn't really. I just didn't think I thought professional boxing would be different. I didn't have a clue about ticket sales and that. And uh, I just, like I said, I turned professional just for the sake of it. For this professional boxing was like this, you know what I mean? I had a different maybe mindset to what it was. Do you know what I mean? After maybe two, three, a few people used to come to watch my first two, three fights. Mm-hmm. And after fourth one, obviously, my gym people started coming in Ramshire Box and they started coming to watch me. So I started building a fan base in my. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously, now I've got good phone now, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Did you feel when you bet Scott Allen the first time round that you'd stamped your authority in the Scottish boxing scene to say, you know what, I'm here? Yeah, I did, to be honest. Uh, you know, when I when I won that fight, I was so happy, you know, and, uh, and you know, I mean, this is, and then obviously my managers started planning things ahead, and I got a rematch around that year again, mm-hmm. and I stopped him this time, so I was like, yeah, that was a British, I think it was a British eliminator. Yeah, I started working towards, I was just working towards bigger, bigger, bigger things, you know what I mean? But... Mm-hmm. I thought maybe this is probably the highest point in my career when I won the Scottish, you know what I mean? <laughs> but things just go bigger and bigger. But see, once you win that, you look at bigger goals. Once I won the British, you know what I mean? You look at bigger, bigger things, you know, and mm-hmm. you keep moving on. And like, now I'm a match room, you just keep moving. You yeah. keep setting higher goals, you know? Obviously, when you beat Scott on for the second time, you, yeah. you got him out of there, and that made you demanded to challenger for the British. Yeah, but right. you fought Jamie Wilson, yeah. and you got him out of there in 73 seconds, mate. Done him in the first round. What an absolute spectacular performance. I'm sure it was the first time in 25 years it was two Scottish fighters yeah. fighting for the bantamweight title. That's right, yeah. The fight with Ewan Wilson was at St Andrews Boxing Club. Yeah. What was the vibe like running about the club at the time? It was brilliant, you know. I was, see, original, going back to our stories, I was originally meant to box... Um, Josh Quayle, wasn't it? Josh I, Quayle? Josh Quayle, I was meant Aye. to box mm-hmm. him and uh, I think something happened. He slipped He slipped or something Aye. and he hurt his knee. Mm-hmm. And they were meant to reschedule it for something... I think he'll crack at the European, you know, he vacated the title, so that's how me and Jamie Wilson got the opportunity, but I was a mm-hmm. man anyway, so mm-hmm. long story short, then me and Jamie Wilson boxed one, and you know, the things made it even better, BBC got involved in it, so the thing even lifted up mm-hmm. St Andrews even more, and my, I think that was my first manager's big, big show, he was running in St Andrews, and yeah. he took over from Tommy Gilmore, and uh, it was brilliant, I mean, obviously the way the fight ended as well, you know, it was, I never expected, because Jamie was, he gave Joshua a hard fight a year before it, or yeah. maybe a couple of months before that fight. But I was very, very confident going into the fight. You know what I mean? I'm going to go and win it. Uh-huh. And obviously, once I land that punch, I looked down, he was down. So right. <laughs> You just slipped that jab. Uh, bingo, man, right hand. It's Good true. It's, uh, it's always the punches, the one you don't look for. Yeah. That's the ones that knock people out. It's the uh-huh. ones you're always looking for. You never knock someone out. Because uh-huh. they'll see it coming. So, uh-huh. it's, I just threw that punch and, uh, mm-hmm. and I seen just, his head was on the ground. Uh-huh. <laughs> the right was on the wall, mate. I think you uh-huh. could have done that twice, didn't you? And the ref waved it off, didn't uh-huh. you? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm sure it was. Uh-huh. I think mm-hmm. three, it's a three, uh, three knockdown rule. Real. That's right. So, if you go down, put it on three times, that's the fight called off straight yeah. away. So. The lead up to that fight, I'm sure you sparred Ryan Burnett. No, it was the Josh Will fight. I was, was, jo- was Josh Will fight. That's, uh, mm-hmm. I've sparred Ryan Burnett. and. Uh, and uh, that was that was a great experience. We went down to Red Hill. Mm-hmm. That's when he was trained with both at that good. time. And uh, uh, that was a great experience. Just obviously as a younger mm-hmm. prospect coming up, and uh, picked a lot up from that spot. We spot twice. We went down uh, on uh, Monday night, and we spot Tuesday. Took a Wednesday off and spot Thursday, and left that night. So it was a great experience for me. Then you defended it three times against yeah. Ian Butcher, Kyle Williams, then Dwayne Winters. Yeah, you were the first Asian British Pakistani think, yeah. boxer to win the Lonsdale bout. Yeah, yeah. How proud a moment was that for you and your family? It was, you know, but I never really, I never really looked at it that way. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I think I still don't even to me at the moment. I've got British, I've got that belt to keep. I don't mm-hmm. really look at it. The moment I think once I retire, I'll probably look back and I've, I've achieved what I've achieved. I mean, I'm, mm-hmm. I've asked quite big what I've done, you know. So at the moment, I'm just fully focused on getting higher and higher and higher. I think that's what every fight is like. You don't mm-hmm. stop and think what you've achieved. Yeah. So you just keep looking at the next step, next step, you know what I mean? But for me, I just look at the next fight. Once mm-hmm. hopefully I get through that, and you look at the next fight, just mm-hmm. that's the way I look at it. After that fight, you bumped into Lee McGregor, your dance partner, mate. What yeah. a fight, mate. It was absolutely fantastic. The style confrontation, the ebb and flow, mate. It was honestly off the charts. A lot of people had you having the fight. Yeah. A lot of people had Lee winning it. A lot of people had it a draw. See, when that final bill went, mate, did you feel you had it by a couple of rounds? Yeah, definitely. You know I mean? We thought we had it by a couple of rounds, you know, and, uh, and that's why, but that's a fight still talked about to this day you know that's mm-hmm. what I, mean, I think that's two years now the fight's happened 
So mm-hmm. that's why people are still talking about the fight, and uh, mm-hmm. they want there's a big high demand for it to happen again. So mm-hmm. yeah, so it's whenever it happens again, it'll be I think mm-hmm. it'll be same same thing. You know, mean mean it will clash again. The mm-hmm. styles. Talk about going to the well, mate. You must have drank it dry twice over, mate. It was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Honestly, you went back and forth, and you must have been knackered after it. No, you know what? It's, uh, you're in the fight. You know, obviously you are. You know, but you're determined to win. I was re- I wanted to win. You know, man, and I thought. This this can change my whole career mm-hmm. if I get this W. But I just think that didn't get resolved. But I still go sign Barry Hunt, which is you know I mean this is a still this is why I'm here and mm-hmm. you know I mean so things uh, things mm-hmm. worked out well. What would happen? Because a know? lot of people had you won in it. I yeah. had you up a couple as well. Nah, Alec yeah. Arthur had you up two or three rounds. Alex Steden had you won in the fight. Yeah. But Eddie Hearns came out mate and he says this fight will happen before the end of February. Tell me what happens in the rematch, Cash. Definitely, I could see myself definitely winning. You know I mean and. Uh, I'd not really think about it when it's until it's announced. Mm-hmm. I'm that type of person. I don't waste super energy yeah. until the fight's been announced and been mm-hmm. and uh, done. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I just look at who's next. Mm-hmm. See until I say Lee Murray is my next opponent. Then mm-hmm. I'll say, all right. Mm-hmm. Then I will start thinking about what I'm gonna do and this and that. But at the moment yeah. until it's announced, I'm not gonna really don't think about it. If that fight is made next, how confident are you going into this fight this time? Would it be a case that you might need to take the judges out of the equation, or do you believe you can simply outbox this man over twelve rounds? Hundred percent. You know, a fight's a fight in the day. You know, you can do uh, things. You might plan something, might not go to plan in the fight. But I think about hundreds of scenarios. What I can do and what can I do? You know, and uh, mm-hmm. I just think through in my head all the time. So, mm-hmm. you know, whenever the fight happens, I'll be very, very comfortable winning. Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, that's a fight. They'll get you right up for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like this is a fight that excite you. Yeah, whenever it does happen, I'm really looking forward to it. You know. Mm-hmm. Tell me, what Lee McGregor is good at. I mean, he is big and he's physical. You know, I mean, this is a thing. You know, I mean, he has. Got, um, is, this is his, you know, I mean, good side of it. You know, I mean, but mm-hmm. you can only do it against the guy if the guy lets you. Mm-hmm. You know, so like I say, a fight's a fight. At the end of the day, you can plan things ahead, but you might not go to plan in the night. So this way, you always got to think about plan A, B, C, and D. Mm-hmm. So that's why I always imagine things. You know, I mean, I don't always think about me. Just go in and do my own thing, and that's it. But always think, well, how that doesn't thing happen? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna change up a bit. So I'm always plan different things ahead when I'm leading up to a fight. Even any fight, I've got always think about different scenarios. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A knife before I think about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Going through my head mm-hmm. all the time. He was dropping his last fight. Could you take anything from that? Because this box the same as weight as you. Do you think he was hot when he was dropping his last fight against Legron? Ah, uh, not really. To be honest, see my last three fights or his last three fights. I don't really look at. Neither he should look at my last three fights. You know, I mean, different styles and my his fights have been different styles. I was a south pole mm-hmm. and he was taller. I'm a, I'm smaller mm-hmm. and I come and move my head and you can't really two is still different styles. So I don't really look at. I'm looking at what he's gonna bring to me and what I'm gonna bring to him. So I don't look at. Oh, he's he's got put down and that. Mm-hmm. I just don't look at. I'm still gonna treat if he's a threat. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, I think he would he would think the same as well towards me. Yeah. I treat every fight as my hardest fight. You know. I don't mm-hmm. care who I'm in front who's in front of me. Do you feel you've both improved as fighters since the last time you fought? Yeah, you're never gonna be the same fight you were three, four fights ago. Mm-hmm. You never are. You know I mean, you pick up experience every fight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're never the fight you were a year ago because you mm-hmm. picked up experience in training, in mm-hmm. sparring, as a fighter. You know what I mean? You never, you never are the same fight. You're always mm-hmm. again no development, but you're picking up experience as a professional as well. So I would say no, you're, you're. It's gonna be a different fight. I'm gonna be a different fight. He's gonna be a different fight from a year, well, yeah. two years ago. If you do go next cash, how does this fight end? Tell me. Me, I see myself winning. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's all I can say. I'm willing going to I'm willing to go down to the well and you know I mean take the win out. Doesn't matter how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna definitely call the winner. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean I've been working all my towards my life. This these this is the moment I've been working my life, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. towards and uh, yeah, I'm I'm willing to do anything to change my life, you know. What I mean, this mm-hmm. is this is what I've done to the age of fifteen, fourteen I came to box and these type of nights, you know, when mm-hmm. it does Happen, you know, team of big fights, you know, and so it's, yeah, this is this is what you work towards. Do you believe if you do fight next that it will come down to the biggest heart and who is the most desired to win, as you just touched on there? Yeah, hundred percent. That's part of it, I would say as well, game plan as well. It, this is no, you can't just go in there and think about your heart and uh, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, that might not be able to think. It comes under a game plan. You need to pick the right game plan as well. So for me, I gotta just go in there and you know, I mean, do what I do. Be myself, you know what I mean, and I definitely can win the fight hundred percent, you know. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's what I look at it. Well, that's us for the day, mate. I really thank you for your time, mate. You're going for strength to strength, bro. And I wish you all the best in the future. God bless. Oh, thanks, Lamar. Appreciate it. Thanks so much.